Greetings, travelers. Welcome again to episode 486 <laughs> to Bible Study Devotional BMX Flatland Learning, where we get to, I guess, continue to keep failing, right? And just keep trying and attempting to at least, hopefully, maybe plant some seeds of faith, right? Um, trying to seek first the kingdom of God. Um, even though I'll be quite honest with you, it's been feeling very, I mean, it's been, it's honestly felt awkward for many, many times, but it's still continually to feel just awkward and even just kind of humiliating to do these. Uh, and it, and it just makes me think it makes, it makes, it makes me wonder <laughs> if just, uh, it makes me wonder about so many aspects of just, uh, where, where our modern society is going and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, we're going to get into it, right? Um, it just trips me out, honestly. There's just so many aspects, because, uh, I've listened to so many sermons on, uh, you know, trying to put God first in everything that we do, to give God literally everything, right? Because basically everything is of God, that's what they say, right? And we are to try and glorify God in all that we do. And sometimes it's, uh, I think we're, what's been starting to occur to me is what, I'm starting to notice what pastors don't really mention, right? Is what happens when, like, say, we, if you lived potentially in an economically driven society, what starts happening if uh, maybe potentially Christianity does not work in a market driven society that is now fueled by the internet and things of this nature? Because it seems we're starting to head into the age of where the internet is now melding, you know, social, economic, um, entertainment, you know, new, it's just, there's just so much things getting driven all in this. And, and now it's almost, um, what, what's starting to occur to me is I'm starting to get, um, confusions on what certain pastors met, actually many pastors from multiple denominations have said to me, and then I go, well, <clears throat> what, yeah, it's like sometimes it like, the, I guess, I guess what may, maybe needs to happen is maybe uh, pastors should start talking a bit more about maybe the technological implications of where, what, what maybe technology is, uh, is doing to, um, to, uh, I guess the faith in some, in some degrees, right? Um, it's been a little strange because, uh, you know, I've heard many pastors and they go, you know, we are to give God the glory in all that we do, right? I mean, there's been many sermons that even said, like, we are to give everything to God, literally everything to God, and that God literally gives us everything, almost in the aspect of Him loaning us things to see how we are to glorify Him, right? But then it's, like, weird because when I think about that, right, just thinking about the word everything and all that we do, we are to just give glory to God, right? I mean, what pastors have never really said is, is there ever a time when you're doing it too much, right? <laughs> is there ever a time when they, <laughs> you're doing it too much or you're just, uh... But it's like, the word everything and then all, it's like they don't really go into it, right? And it's, um, it's just strange because then now I'm starting to observe these aspects of... Actually, I've been, I've been hearing many believers, you know, they've been, uh bringing up things of like this company's promoting that that company's promoting this stuff like this right that's very strange and it's uh and it's odd because it's not just like just a couple believers this is like actually like many <laughs> like, i've been seeing this these same thoughts spring up many many of times right and it's um it's strange because I guess I don't see too many companies really uh promoting the faith right and it's like this is something that I don't hear pastors really bring it up, right? It's like sometimes we are kind of, I feel like a lot of believers are starting to at times almost like point out what is starting to occur, right? But then it's like, but then it's like what I'm seeing a lack of is um, even companies even trying to promote the faith even to a little degree. And I guess that is where, that was what I went into yesterday, right? Is like, the small seeds of faith. I tried to look up stuff on this. And this is what gets hard, right? Is because I literally tried to look up commentaries on this. 
And I understand that the commentaries go into the scriptures, right? Which is always good, right? But they're not going into it in the aspect of like where our modern society is at right now. Um, and it, it's like, uh, and I think that is something what I'm kind of curious about. We tried to look it up yesterday. We couldn't really, we didn't really find it. Maybe I didn't do enough searching, right? But what I'm wondering is how small of a seed of faith can be planted, right? Like how, how, like in what degree, like how tactfully could a little, little small seed of faith be planted, right? Like in the, and even, even, even in the aspect of what I brought up yesterday, right? We were even playing, um, we were playing some WoW yesterday, right? And you know how they have like the priest class and the paladin and, you know, like the nature classes and stuff like this and how they use certain words in there. Do you think that could potentially be a seed that was could try to at least be attempted to be planted, even though they're not necessarily going out of their way and just full on going, you know, trying to promote the faith fully, right? Um, so I'm kind of wondering in that aspect. I have been having troubles finding um, find it. Maybe I'm maybe I'm wording the question wrong, right? I've been trying to word the question as of like, um, what's what. Can a small seed of faith be planted look like, right? And then we try and go in that. And I know they bring up the scriptures, right? But they never, they don't really go into it in the aspect of like, you know, even like, you know, like how I brought this up yesterday, right? Like how my Christian friend got me into this, right? This is the first MTG box I got. And this guy's name was Gideon, right? And they took attributes of Gideon and they, the character Gideon right here, they almost kind of like got away with using the name Gideon and then, after reading the Bible again, I didn't realize the name Gideon was even in the Bible. And it was just strange because it was like I was already familiarized with the name Gideon before I even got deeper into Scripture, right? And it's almost like this, these little – and this is just an example, right? This has been happening many of times, right? And it's like almost like that little example. Can, can that little mundane – maybe it's not, maybe it's not even mundane – but can that little thing be watered by other believers later on, right? Because what I've also observed is that then some believers say, well, that's not the way they should do it. You shouldn't be doing it that way. You know, if you're going to, if you're going to be like, uh, glorifying God, you should just be full on, just like, just, you know, just full on and go and do it. Right. And it's just like, and the, but then it's like when I, I don't know, it's weird, man. It's a, it's a, it's a strange thing to think about. Right. It's a strange thing to think about when past... I, I think what's also really weird now that, I, now that I'm starting to observe things. The weird thing is when pastors say, like, we are to give God everything, right? Like, literally everything. And we are to... And that, and that, and that God... Everything... That God provides us all that we need. Because that's in, that's in um, Philippians 4... It's either 4.6 or 4.19, right? Let's actually... Let's look at that one. What is that one? Uh, Philippians... Uh, God gives us all that we got. Uh, it's it's Philippians. Let me just see if I can find it without even. Let's see if I can. Let's see if we can find this. I know it's in Philippians. Uh, I think it's Philippians four. Um, where is it? Hmm. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's right here. And my God will supply every need of yours according to His riches in glory in Christ Jesus. Right, and I think this is another reason why a lot of the pastors go. You know, God does give us all that we need, right? Um, that he basically loans us all that we need in order to give him the glory, right? I think that's, that's I think, why is because of this verse is why they say that, right? And this is from multiple, multiple different denominations, by the way, that they say these kind of things, right? And, but then it's like, sometimes I wonder, like, in the aspect of, just a market driven society right where it's like economically driven if we think about that right imagine like it, it just trips me out because i go some of these things that these pastors have said over the over the year over the many of years i go well do you think that there would be more companies that would at least try even a little bit to try and plant some seeds of faith right like even like if you look at in and out right I don't even know how in and out did it. It's like, I, it's so weird. I guess it's because they started way back in the day, right? But you know, like how in and out they like put these random little like Bible verses on things? <laughs> Which I think is really, I, I think it's kind of cool. But it's just hilarious that they did that, right? Because I've heard some believers and they go, well, we're supposed to keep things separated. 
we're not supposed to glorify God and that kind of stuff. But then I think of like, well, then how did in and out do it? Right? <laughs> they, they flat out put little Bible verses on, on like a little cup or like some end of the little plastic brim, man. And it's just so funny that I'm like, how in the world did they do it, right? It's just so weird. And it's like, um, it'd just be interesting. It'd be so, I mean, it'd be such a trip, man. Imagine like, if we were really to, I guess, try and give glory to God in everything that we do, right? I mean, I'm, I mean, that'd just be... Sometimes I feel guilty, right? And that's the other thing, man. Sometimes, like, here's the weird thing, is I feel like now it's I'm at the aspect of, like, sometimes I feel guilty because I have... Sometimes I have so much energy, right? That I feel like I could just... I honestly feel like I'm not even given enough, to be to be quite frank. You know, like, I feel like I, I, I could do way more like stuff right for like i guess maybe to build up the kingdom or something like that but then there there's so many aspects where it's almost like i feel like i shouldn't like it's almost like the world or something is almost telling me that i need to be like i shouldn't be doing it because it could be a detriment to my future or my life and then it brings up thoughts of anxiety and then I start observing other things, and then it, it I don't know, I, I, can, I guess that's the other strange thing about it, right? But I guess what matters is that we're trying, right? We're attempting. And, I, and ultimately, I think, even if we fail, right, we have to truly think if we are delighting in the ways of the Lord, right, that he is going to establish our steps, right? Um, because that's the other strange thing, because, I mean, I imagine thinking every company that would really try and give glory to God, right? Like, it's a very, um, now it's at the point where I can only name maybe a handful of companies that even do it. <laughs> and I say, and I started thinking about it last night, and I'm like, wait a minute, like, why can I only name, like, on literally, like, one hand, like, all the, like, the, maybe there's more, but, you know, blatantly, maybe, but there's also other companies that do it very, very subtly, right? And then I think about it like, how subtle can it be, right? And it's, um, and then we try and look more deeper into it. I can't really find much stuff, so now we're, here we are, okay? <laughs> but I guess there's that other, uh, there's that other verse. Where's that other verse? It's like saying something like, um, you sh uh, I think it's like Luke's, uh, you shall love the Lord with all your strength. Love the Lord with all your strength, all your mind, all your soul all your strength when i think about this verse right let's let's see here sorry this one's going to be this this bible study is a bit way awkward it's very uh confusing i apologize um it's because i've looked up some things i'm asking some questions and it's like it's either i don't know if pastors want to talk about it or they don't want to like I don't know. It's just strange, right? I think maybe why pastors are a bit shy to talk about this stuff, right? But it's the, here, here's the weird thing, right? Here, here's the strange thing, right? Is because I hear pastors say, oh, we're supposed to glorify God in all that we do. He's given us everything that we need to glorify him. But then I feel like there's this economical aspect to things. And I wonder, if, like, imagine if you were to say that to some people, like some business owners, right? And they're like, okay, we're going to go and try and uh, glorify God in all that we do. He's given us all these things to glorify him. And then they just start like putting a little cross on something or like they just start uh, putting a Bible verse like in and out and then their entire business just tanks, right? What would, uh, as you as a pastor, what would you, you would be like, imagine if they put like their entire life into a, a business or something like that and it just, and it just, it just tanks. Everybody just starts boycotting it or something, right? What would you as a pastor feel? You'd be like, uh... Well, you know, I mean, I, I feel, me personally, I just would be like, uh, uh, you know, I don't know what I would really, I mean, I, ultimately I would say, if I were to think about it deeply, I'd be like, well, if that is happening, right, then, like, what would I say, right? If that, if somebody came up to me and that, that situation occurred, right, because it might happen, right, because that's the... That's the thing, because now after looking at many companies right now, um, I go, well, if God is giving us everything to ultimately give Him the glory, like it's uh, 
you think that like way more people would be trying to do it, right? Like way more people. And then it makes me think, right? Like how many aspects are people maybe trying to not do that because um, economically something would fail in, a, in, in their, in their uh, approach to doing it, right? Because, and it's like a, and it's weird. It's a strange, it's a very strange question. I haven't really heard many sermons on, I've actually never heard a sermon on this thing right here, right? So uh, it's a very strange uh, thing to think about. Ultimately, I would think that if we are trying to delight in the, in the Lord, right, that he is going to establish our steps. And I'd like to think that maybe even if a bad thing were to happen, like say some, you know, something bad happened or a confusing situation happened, I'd be like, I'd like to think that, you know, with Romans 8.28, Romans 8.28, God, God works all things for the good. Okay, Romans 8.28, Romans 8. 828. Now, a lot of believers bring this verse up too, right? But also it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know, huh? I'm wondering what other believers would think about this, right? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to, though, to them who are called according to his purpose, right? And we look deeper into his purposes because it is, it is in his will, right? There's even that part in the Lord's Prayer, right? that says something like, something about, um, I will be done. Let's look at it. Let me see here. And it's just strange because then it's like, when I think about, there's so many aspects to what's like chirping me out, like in the sense of the work, maybe it's, I don't even, now here's the other thing is sometimes I get confused of like, what is of the world and what is of God? Right, because it feels like so many aspects right now in our society, it's just all starting to kind of like malgamesh because of a market economically driven society, right? And it makes me wonder how much of money is of the worldly aspects, ways of the world, and then how much of it it's like it's like strange, right? And I'm like confused, and it's uh, <clears throat> it is confusing. Um, I'm wondering what other believers would tell me. <laughs> I've, tr I've asked these questions many times. That's the other weird thing. I've asked these questions to many believers on the internet and stuff. And sometimes like, I think, I, I honestly thought what I would get, like, it, I'd like to see like thousands of answers, you know, all, all these different denominations saying a little part of it. It'd be interesting. But sometimes, um, sometimes it gets a little confusing, right? Ultimately, I'd like to think that we are to seek first his kingdom, right? And that's the other strange thing, right? That's here, Here's the other aspect that is also strange, right? Because I know I might not be doing this correctly and take all the words that I'm saying with a grain of salt, right? But if we, when, even just thinking about that, we went into that verse yesterday, right? Seek first the kingdom of God, right? Let's look at it. Matthew 6, 33. Now, that, the weird thing is, is that when, when I read this, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you, right? How I've kind of been treating that verse in my life in particular is that sometimes I see these like subtle little, little, little seeds of faith, right? Even if it's like the most mundane little thing, right? And I try and follow them, right? Like even say, like even, you know, even certain mundane things, like even for like, say, take the BMX bike, for example. There was these two Flatlanders, right? And they both proclaimed the gospel, right? And they would both do the stick be no hander. And I just thought that trick was just really weird. It kind of looked like a cross, right? So I was like, huh, that's strange. Out of all these BMX edits, these two Flatland riders are the ones like promoting God. And, and uh, even in the slightest degree, they're both doing the same trick. And that got me into wanting to learn that trick in the first place, which got me deeper and actually wanted to learn Flatland. Would that now see... Okay, so now is that seeking first the kingdom of God in any aspect if, say... You know, you see a sea of things, right? You, imagine you get you ha get handed a platter, right? You get handed a platter in front of you, and the, everything else. There's only two things on that platter, maybe, and they're promoting God even in the very, very slightest thing. Would you rather pick something else, or would you pick that thing that is trying to promote it a little bit, right? And I think is that seeking first the kingdom of God in even that aspect, right? And I'm wondering, like. How many other things can that... I mean, take these cards, for example. I know, like, a lot of 
probably a lot of believers and stuff would be like, oh, you shouldn't be playing this game and stuff like that. You shouldn't be doing this. But the thing is, is that some of these cards literally have like made me remind me of Bible verses and stuff. There's even a card in here with a cross on it. <laughs> it's hollowed ground. Hollowed ground has a cross on it. Now, I don't know if they would promote that right now in our society right now, but it's strange that they put a cross on one of the cards, right? And it's just like, is that seeking first the kingdom in any way, right? I don't know. It's strange, right? Because, uh, I don't know. It's odd, right? I feel like that's this, this other mysterious element to it. Because I have also met other believers, and sometimes they do things like, say like some artists. There's been many artists that I've learned from, right? with like like drawing and painting and stuff like that and they were believers right and i and sometimes i go huh maybe there's something that they that, that i was supposed to learn from that believer right because we did a bible study on how god sometimes leads us so maybe that's just another aspect of where we should go into right because we, we did a bible study maybe like three months ago or something right it was like three months ago we did a bible study on how god leads us how god like uh, directs us and stuff like that and and they say that sometimes God uses other believers to help uh, to help guide us in, into certain areas right and it's um it's interesting man it's uh it's very it's very uh it can be very confusing at times but I guess what matters most is at least trying to attempt it right and I guess that's the other aspect is I guess another aspect of thinking about things is I haven't really heard things on, actually today I actually heard one, I, I, I have heard it once, but just thinking about the aspect of how we view failure, right? How are we to view failure in terms of the faith, right? Because what I'm actually starting to notice with a lot of believers in, in some aspects is like, say a pastor says something wrong, right? Like, I've actually somewhat noticed like sometimes like, because of maybe the situation where they're at the front of the pulpit or something, nobody's just going to go out and raise their hand and be like, hey, man, that, no. Nah. You know, like nobody really does that, right? So what's strange is since you don't really see that, a lot of pastors may say some things, but nobody really wants to be that person to be like, hey, man, that I think that might not be like a way to bring that up or something like that, right? And then what ends up happening is then this, all these other believers kind of say things and then like, and then it's just strange, right? And it's, uh, I think that aspect. And then, but what if he didn't even know that he just failed right there, right? I think this is actually what's starting to occur with, a, with certain things. Is that what happens if that dude, since nobody told him that he, that he failed at that or he said something wrong and nobody wanted to go and, you know, go and say that to him, right? What if he just took it as, oh, well, I guess, I guess, I guess it's all good, right? Like, and it's just, uh, oh, it's strange, man. Man, it is a strange one. This Bible study is really weird, huh? Um, okay, let's read some other verses. Let's see here. I think a bit of some seeds of anxiety have been, this is generally what ends up happening, if you guys haven't noticed. Um, generally end up, and what's weird is I'm, we're streaming this. <laughs> It's just weird that I'm streaming these almost, you get to see these doubts that start occurring um, in my own mind. These little seeds of doubts, even though maybe it's not really doubts, maybe it's more of uh, anxieties um, when we are told not to be anxious, right? I literally went into Matthew 6 yesterday where the Lord Jesus Christ says, says like three times not to be anxious, right? And to seek first his kingdom. And it's just so interesting, right? It's so... Very, very interesting, right? Even this, even the, the even when we went, went into Philippians, I'm, I have an underline right here. It says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You know what? There's another verse that we should go into. Actually, I think it's right in Colossians. Um, where is it? Let's see here. Where is it? Hmm. Colossians 3.23. Look at that one. 3.23. I mean, I have it up right there. I just want to see if I have it underlined in here. 3.23. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. See, what, what 
Uh, this one, this one's a trip too, man. It's weird because you think about that one. Okay, so if we go into that one and then we go into uh, Matthew six, right? Let's see here. We're Matthew six on. Where is it? Something about you can't serve two masters, right? Let me see if I can find it. Okay, here we go. So I wonder what believers think about this, right? No one can serve two masters, for either, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money, right? And then we look at this one. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, right? Not for men, right? So it's, it's interesting thinking about that. It's interesting thinking about this verse, these verses, these two, but then thinking about what I brought up earlier, right? About the economy, about the market, right? And it's interesting thinking how many companies would potentially just tank, just go under if they just, um, imagine if just today, they all just started just promoting the gospel, right? Or they did something like in and out where they started putting a little Bible verse somewhere. How many of these companies do you think would just flat out just, Maybe they would continue to succeed, right? Maybe they, maybe things would start working out. But I think the aspect is, what would? Sometimes I wonder what would the Lord want, right? Would the Lord want us to glorify God and everything, just like what all these pastors have said to me? Or and then and then it's strange because this is another question I have that gets brought up, right? It's then we go into, you know, you know Matthew five, right? And this is the other thing, right? Because I get. I've brought up this, these verses many times, right? It says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven, right? What's weird is it says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. And what's weird is I probably listened to 20 sermons, like literally, I probably listen to 20 sermons and little short videos on YouTube on these verses alone, right? Very inspiring, always inspiring. It gets me to get motivated to do like, I guess like the great commission of trying to proclaim the gospel, right? But what's weird is none of these sermons have ever, now when I look back and I go, and I think about a market-driven economy, right? And I go, are there times when we need to hide as believers, right? No pastors have ever, when I looked up those sermons, right, on these verses, that none of the pastors, none of them, I don't remember a single instance of them t saying, yeah, there's some times when you shouldn't let your light shine. You actually need to hide. You need to uh, not be giving glory to God because this or that. And these are some of the thoughts that start occurring, right? Because I, if you think of some things that's going on in our economy, right, it's just like, then I, you know, it just, it just confuses me. And it's hard that I can't really find too many sermons on this kind of stuff, right? And it's, uh, right, it's, it's just a strange one. But ultimately, I mean, I guess these are the, the words of the Lord, right? You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So ultimately, I guess we are to just continue, continually to just let our light shine, right? And I guess that's the other weird thing of thinking about, because these are actually the verses that actually kind of got me to start streaming, right? This is that's actually the weird thing. These sets of verses and listening to so many of the sermons on them, they actually motivated me to even start doing this bike stream, <laughs> even to start doing this Bible study. Right, it's just so strange, and then it's and it's and it's strange thinking about it now, looking back, and I go, man, it's so weird that these sets of verses like almost cha like changed my because because to be quite honest, I was like I didn't really want to start streaming and stuff like that, but then these these cha these verses changed me, man, and I was like, what in the world? And hearing all these believers, it really motivated me, but and it's strange after thinking about how many streams that we've done, and the aspect of how. You know, in a stream, you can't really edit things out. You can kind of, you know, maybe, maybe you can if you had the right stuff. But 
in terms of right now, we're streaming on a phone, so we can't really edit things out, right? And what's come into light, I guess, is what's weird about streaming is that you almost have to, like, like I said it yesterday, right? You almost have to accept the fact that you're just going to fail, right? And you're just going to fail potentially in front of people. And that's the other weird thing is I'm wondering, like, if we were to let our light shine, are we to also, like, let people see our failures uh, as, <laughs> as, you know? And it's just strange. It's so strange thinking about this. And it's weird because I've tried to look up questions on of, of sermons on YouTube on certain things of what I've been talking about today. And I can find, like, bits and parts of things, but it seems like there's not, like... Uh, it, it seems like I'm always left not really... I'm still a bit confused as as to some of the things that I have questions on, right? Um, yeah, I don't know. Ultimately, I guess what matters most is if we're trying to give glory to God, right? I mean, that's ultimately, you know, we are to try and seek first the kingdom of God. That's this is the, These are the words of the Lord. We are to try and seek first the kingdom of God. We are tr to try and give glory to God in all that we do, right? And whether thought or deed, we are to try and give glory to God, right? And I think the other scary part about it too was listening. It was also um, doing the Bible study. We did the Bible study maybe a couple weeks ago on um, the living sacrifices, right? Some of those commentaries are actually a little bit spooky to read now. That I think about it, because like you know they were saying like you know they were bringing up things of like you know Christ made the ultimate sacrifice right he gave up his body for us right he gave up his entire life and everything and that we are to almost like take up our own cross and and, and you know it's 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 strange it's it's and it also kind of makes me think man like it's uh it's almost like a scary aspect of thinking about that right of like almost offering your life everything almost as some sort of living sacrifice to, you know, and it's almost like a, it's like a, that's like such a heavy devotion even just to think about, right? It's a very, very strange thing to think about. But, um, yeah. Oh, well, we could at least try. We can try and continue to seek first. And also we could try just like the Lord says, because ultimately we should just be trying to sow seeds, right? How the Lord likens the kingdom to sowing seeds, right? So maybe that's something that, you know, like we went in the Bible study yesterday, right? So if, I think it, as long, I feel like that's a big one, right? So maybe we're getting too much into, this, this is the thing. Sometimes I think too much into, I'd like to say it as a worldly aspect of what I was thinking about, right? Like the economy, markets, but then it's like, it's so strange. Do you think that is worldly or do you think that's just just our society right now, right? And, and, and now I'm having, I guess what's starting to occur is, is I'm having a bit hard when I think about like money and the economy and the market. And then I think, and then I listen to sermons on the world and then it's like I have trouble distinguishing, you know, aspects, right, of these things. And I laugh at it now, but these are kind of like uh, strange questions I have being brought up. So let's read up a commentary, okay? Let's, uh, what commentary? We've covered many, many verses today, right? Let's see here. You know what? Let's go into Proverbs 16.3. We have this one. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established, right? That's a strange one, right? Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. I honestly like that one a little bit better, because in the it, actually that's the KJV version of Proverbs sixteen three. The uh, the ESV version of Proverbs sixteen three says, "Commit your works to the Lord, and your plans will be established." Right? I wonder if they kind of mess some things up on that. So it says. Like literally, if I even like bring up, let, bring if you if you look at Proverbs sixteen three, look at let's look at Proverbs sixteen three, Proverbs sixteen three, right? Hmm. Let's see where okay right here, Proverbs sixteen three. The ESV says, "Commit your work to the Lord, and your plans will be established." Right? 
I think that's a strange one, right? I don't... Sometimes I go, oh, I don't know if that's my plan, your plans, right? Or is it, is it, is it, right? It's like, it's strange. Or I guess that would maybe be um, thinking about the Lord's plans, right? So it's almost like the kingdom, right, th uh, thing. I, I do like the, the King James Version, right? Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established, right? So let's, let's actually look up a commentary on this. I know we've looked up commentaries on this one, but now I'm kind of like curious to see a little bit more into it. Proverbs 16.3, commentary. See, I'm wondering with that one, and then also just thinking about, and he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. The weird one is when he says all your strength, right? It's almost like mind, heart, body, soul, everything. Just give it, you know, we are to try and love the Lord with that much fervor, fervency, right? It's like with everything. And it's like strange to think about, man. It's like, and it's just weird because sometimes I wonder, man, is, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see here. Okay, Proverbs 16, 3, commentary. Let's see what this one's going to say. I'm trying to find if, there, if there's a... Uh, let's read what God question says. I'm actually curious. Let's see. How can we commit our work to the Lord and have our plans established? Proverbs 16.3 states, Commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. This wonderful verse speaks of our responsibility to serve God and the result of discharging our duty faithfully. The verb commit is a word that in Hebrew literally means to roll. Other passages such as Genesis 29.3 and Psalms 22.8-9 likewise use the idea of rolling something to the Lord. The idea is that we completely give something over to God in dependence upon Him. When we commit our work to the Lord, we offer everything we do completely to Him. See, there's another instance. There's another instance where they bring that up, right? About like giving everything to God. Like we should, you know, it's like, it's a scary thing to do sometimes when we really think about it, right? I mean, I guess what makes it scary, right? Especially if in terms of like, I mean, even if I can, all, I'm, I mean, I'm not in that position, right? I'm not in the position of maybe thinking of thoughts of like, you know, imagine you have a business and all this stuff's going on. You put a lot of money into things, but you've never really tried to like, you know, do anything trying to give glory to God in any of that stuff, you'd be like, oh, I don't know if we should be doing this. My company might tank or something like this, right? And then it's like, what do we think about like these verses and stuff, right? It just trips me out. The Hebrew syntax, okay, back to the commentary. The Hebrew syntax also reveals the idea that we are to commit to the Lord in order that our plans will be established. We must do the first part if we expect God to fulfill the second part. If we completely depend upon God in our work, he will establish our plans. That is, he will bring about or cause to happen our plans. We can expect God to bring our work to fruition in God's way and in God's time when we depend on him in our efforts. Part of committing our work to the God, of course, is seeking and following God's will. When our work aligns with God's will, then success will follow. So I'm wondering what other believers would think about that, right? I'm literally wondering, because I feel like that last sentence that they said is seeking and following God's will. When our work aligns with God's will, then success will follow, right? I'm actually not quite sure about that, right? Like, what do you, th I'm wondering what other believers would think about that last sentence on, 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 in this paragraph on God Questions, right? They literally put that in there. Oh, somebody said something. Oh, sorry. Uh, promotion of your channel. Oh, that's a really long one, huh? I don't know. Sorry, I got sidetracked right there. But, um, right, so, God's will, right? Let me, let's read this again. This is on God Questions, by the way. It's not like I'm, you know, this is on God Questions on Proverbs 16.3, right? I'm just wondering, because I just feel like that last sentence, if I were to say that, I feel like that last sentence, if I were to say that to other believers, I feel like they would not even, I feel like I'd maybe get some backlash for saying that. 
but then they wrote it down right here, right? Let me read this again. If, if, if we completely depend upon God in our work, he will establish our plans. That is, he will bring about or cause to happen our plans. We can expect God to bring our work to fruition in God's way and in God's time when we depend on him in our efforts. Part of committing our work to God, of course, is seeking and following God's will. When our work aligns with God's will, then success will follow. So I'm wondering, huh? See, because it, it kind of trips me out about thinking about that and then like thinking about, you know, seeking first the kingdom, Jesus liking the kingdom, the planting seeds. And then it kind of just makes me wonder like how many companies would really... Like, I'm wondering, right, like, what would, uh, imagine if you're a big business owner or a big company and you hear that, right? And like, okay, tomorrow we're going to start putting a Bible verse on, uh, we're going to just hide a Bible verse on everything that we put on, right? Imagine, I can only imagine, like, how trippy would that be, right? I, I, it trips me out that in and out even did that. Like, it really, it really does trip me out. Like, I'm wondering, like. Do you think, like, sometimes I wonder, like, do you think in and out was somehow inspired by, like, I'm actually curious, why did they even start doing that? Why did in and out start putting Bible verses? It's so weird that they would do that, right? They literally put it... Huh. Proverbs 3. Why does in and out... Well, let's, let's look at... Let's look at this now. Now I'm curious. Now I'm curious. Okay, let's see here. Why does in and out print Bible verses on its cups and wrappers? Have you ever noticed tiny Bible verses on the bottom of your soda cup? The owner of the president of In-N-Out Burger revealed in a rare interview why the company prints Bible verses on its packaging and how that ties into her own personal Christian faith. Lesney Snyder, the 37-year-old CEO and granddaughter of the chain's founders, revealed that the Christian post she turned to God after she lost her father as a teenager and later went through three failed marriages and that sent her down a dark path. Okay, let's see here. Okay, okay. Oh, wait, this is kind of long to read. Oh, my goodness. Okay, this is what she said. He had just accepted the Lord and wanted to put that little touch of his faith in our on our brand. The verses are all subtle. It's placed discreetly on various cups wrappers, merely depicting the verses, books, and numbers. They started in four places, according to... For God so loved... On the soda cup, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever... Whoever so believeth in him shall not should believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The milkshake cup has Proverbs three five. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will Oh, that's very strange. That, that's so strange. He didn't actually they put in Proverbs three five. But I think Proverbs three six has in all your ways acknowledge him. Right? It's weird. It's like, I'm, it's so strange. Today it just feels like, sorry, today is like very like choppy. It's like, <clears throat> it's like, it literally feels like I'm going through some waves right now. Like there's just these giant waves and I'm on this little raft, right? And I'm just <laughs> trying to like go over on these waves and there's these giant boats over there. I'm trying to like, I don't know. We're trying to make it, okay? This one's hard. I, I apologize if this uh, Bible study is very, uh, perplexing it's hard for me too I, I honestly can't even believe i'm even doing this bible study it's just it's so confusing it's so like i probably said so many wrong things but it's also just things that i'm having a hard time literally kind of like finding certain i think i'm just maybe not asking the right questions or something or i'm phrasing the questions wrongly okay so it's weird so in and out they put in proverbs 3 5 right it says trust in the lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding they put 3, 5, but you know what's weird is 6, three, Proverbs 3, 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. That's gnarly, huh? 
in all your ways acknowledge him. That's gnarly, huh? I guess that almost goes into the whole seek first the kingdom of God thing, right? Huh. Feels like there's these like sometimes I just feel like there's these mysterious things, right? Like we're to try and just find out, right? The famous double doubles have Nahum 1-7 printed on the wrapper, which reads, The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. That's very interesting. That is another, you know, that's another very interesting thing to think about as well. Even just all the things that when I was living in my car in Long Beach, right? See, this is the, the other scariest element, right? Like, it's so crazy even just to say this, right? It's so gnarly to say, imagine if I just lost everything. Even this bike, even every, imagine I just lost everything, my shoes, all my clothes, everything that I ever have ever had, right? I, I'd be pretty confident to say that, you know, like, I'd at least get some help from some believers, right? If that was, uh, if that was the case, right, that, you know, I could get help from the Lord as well and he'd always be there. We are to be content in that every situation, right? That's the other, other strange thing to think about. Okay, let's see here. Hmm. That's very interesting. It's so interesting that in and out would do that. I'm like so like tripped out that they even did this. <laughs> you know, it's like, because I don't... The other brand, I guess, is like Ezekiel bread. They have kind of did that, but... It's just strange, right? I mean, imagine if, like, every other, every company just started doing this. I just, it would just trip me out, right? Like, even not blatantly, not like this big old, but even just, like, a little thing just hidden somewhere. It'd be very interesting. Hmm. It's weird. This is just stuff that I haven't heard many pastors bring up. I've never heard a pastor bring up in and out. That's the funny thing. But Okay, let's see here. Where are we at? Oh, yeah, we were on this one. We were on Proverbs 16, 16, 3. Okay, let's see here. Proverbs, as a literary form, communicate general life principles and not exact promises. In other words, we can generally expect God to bless our work when we operate according to his ways and dependence upon him. However, this does not mean we will never lose a job or have trouble in our work. Instead, we can expect God to fulfill the promise of Romans 8.28. <laughs> I, I literally brought up Romans 8.28 today, right? That's so funny. We know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose, right? This proverb is similar to the context of Psalms 113. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way of that sinners take or sit in the seat of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. When we commit our way, ways and our works to the Lord, he will bless our efforts according to his perfect will, and ways beyond our understanding. We should serve the Lord faithfully, and then leave the results to him. Though we still face times of difficulty, we can trust that God is working for his ultimate good and ours through our efforts to please him in our daily vocation. Hmm. Intriguing. Now see, now I'm, now you know what the other weird thing? I'm, I'm, I'm like trying to like go back. Why did these thoughts even occur? You know why these thoughts have even occurred in the first place? Is because I heard all these other believers ago, well, this company's promoting that, this company's promoting that, and I go, well, why aren't there more companies just promoting, like, the Bible, <laughs> right? And then that, that just, just hearing all these believers say that, stuff like that, it, like, made me think about that, and then it made me go into this, this whole thing of just, like, thinking about all these things, and then thinking about the economy, and then thinking about all this other stuff, man, it's a trip, dude, like, man, it's a trip. Anyway, I guess that was the Bible study today, right? Ultimately, uh, we are to just try and do our best, right? I think there's even that, right? There's even the aspect of, well, we actually did kind of cover that with Colossians, right? Whatever we do, work heartily uh, as for the Lord and not for men, right? 
That's a strange one, thinking about that, right? Trying to give... And I've also heard that... I've, yeah, you know, huh. That's a very harsh one. That's a hard one to think about. You know, sometimes, because it's like... Sometimes I wonder, like... Because I've actually had these thoughts actually come in. I'm not lying. I've had these thoughts. I go, man, if I wasn't doing this Bible study and I just started, like, promoting other things, right? Like, imagine if I did it... I, sometimes I like to think. Imagine if I never did this Bible study. Imagine I've never even mentioned God once, right? And I just did the bike stream, right? I, sometimes I get these thoughts in my head that, man, it would have it uh, been way more... Uh, maybe would have appealed to more people, right? And, and it would have uh, hit the masses a bit more. But... But then I think about that Colossians verse, right? If we, are, we are to work heartily as for the Lord and not for men, right? Man, that's such a harsh, that's such a, a strange one, right? Hmm. Ultimately, we're just trying to give glory to God, right? Hopefully we can do that. We can at least try to do that in any degree. And hopefully I'd like to say how we're trying to do that, even though it's confusing sometimes. And awkward and very weird. <laughs> Try, okay? We're going with it, okay? Oh well. Let's do a card draw, I guess. That was a Bible study. <laughs> Man, these Bible studies are weird, huh? I can't believe it. Oh my goodness, this has been 51 minutes. I'm just like, they're strange, dude. I honestly can't believe I've done this many of them. But. We've only just read one comment. I, I want to read actually another comment right now. Because that was on Got Questions, right? We didn't read another one. Let's read a Proverbs 16.3 commentary. I want to read a, a Bible Hub one now. Just, just to kind of like see what another viewpoint is, right? Let's see another viewpoint, okay? Just before I end it. Okay, this is Ellicott's. Commit thy works unto the Lord, literally roll them upon him as a burden too heavy to be borne by thyself. Thy works signify all that has to do, all that how, all that thou hast to do. God provides such works for us, and thy thoughts shall be established. Thy plans shall prosper, for they be undertaken according to the will of God and carried out by his aid. This is the Benson Commentary. Commit thy works unto the Lord, Hebrew. Literally, roll unto the Lord. Namely, as a man rolls to another a burden, which is too heavy for himself, imploring his help, refer all thy actions, concerns to God, and to his glory. Just like I brought up, right? <laughs> as the end of them, and in the discharge of thy duty, depend upon God's providence and grace for assistance and success, and thy thoughts shall be established. Thy honest desires and designs shall be brought to a happy issue one way or another. Wow. A lot of these commentators, a lot of these commentators, normally they're putting big old pages. These are like, these are like paragraphs, right? Okay, Matthew Henry's concise commentary. The renewing grace of God alone prepares the heart for every good work. This teaches us that we are not sufficient of ourselves to think or speak of anything wise and good. Ignorance, pride, and self-flattery render us partial judges, respecting of our own conduct. Roll the burden of thy care upon God and leave it with him by faith and dependence upon him. Barnes notes in the Bible, commit literally as the margin as the man transfers a burden from his own back to one stronger and better able to bear it. Compare the margin references. Okay, well. Oh, interesting. Oh, wow, Gil actually kind of went into... Okay, this is the last one we'll read, okay? This one, he actually goes into it a little bit more than the others. Commit thy works unto the Lord natural, civil, or religious. Seek him for strength and assistance in all. That's gnarly. And leave the success of all with him. Or roll thy works on or unto the Lord. Devolve all upon him. Cast all care upon him and his providence for supply, support, and sustenance in life and commit the business of the happy salvation of thy soul and the important affairs of it wholly to him who is able, willing, and faithful to keep what is committed to him 
and having so done, may sit down easy and satisfied, as one that is rid of a burden by casting on another, better able to bear it, or more equal to the work committed to him. The tergum is reveal thy works to God, and so Cyric and Vulgate Latin versions reveal thy works to the Lord. That's weird. Reveal thy works to the Lord? What? Why didn't any of the other... That's strange. None of the other... Nobody else even went into that. That makes... What in the world? I don't know. Reveal thy works to the Lord. The, Vulg the Vulgate Latin version says, Reveal thy works to the Lord. Thy case, condition, and circumstances, thy wants and necessities. Seek and ask for a supply of him. Make known thy requests of him, for though he is not ignorant of the affairs of his people, yet he will be sought unto to do the things of them he intends to do, and they stand in need of. And thy thoughts shall be established. When a man has, by faith and his, in his prayer, committed himself, his case, his ways, and works to the Lord, his mind is made easy, his thoughts are composed and settled, and he is quietly awaits the issues of things. He says the will of the Lord be done. He knows that he causes all things to work together for good, and whatever, whatever is for his good and, the, and God's glory shall be brought to pass. That is interesting, right? And I guess that's ultimately what we think about, right? It's, is I think as long as we're trying to give glory to God, right? Even though we may fail at times, right? And we probably are going to fail many times. Ultimately, right, that's... Just like what Matthew 14 through 16 says, right? And Matthew 14 through 16 and also John where it says, Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit and stuff like that, right? And this make and back to the commentary. And this makes him calm, sedate, and easy, and he is in fair of having a, he is in a fair way of having his designs, desires, and endeavors accomplished. See Psalms 37 5. What is Psalms 3? Is that is that the one where commit Okay, commit your way to the Lord. Okay, let's, we didn't read that one. Interesting. That's a new combo. That's a new combo. Someone comboed Proverbs 16.3 with uh, Psalms 37.5. What does it say? It says, delight yourself in the Lord. Oh, wait, that's four. Oh, wait, actually, let's just read it. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Oh, that's so funny. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Dude, we just found another combo. That combo is into Matthew 5.16. Dude, that's so funny, man. <laughs> oh my goodness, I just laugh at this because it's just like... Oh my goodness, bro. Like, we literally went through a whole hoop... We went through a whole set of hoops, all to go back to this one right here. Oh my goodness, man. <laughs> oh my, dude, that's so funny. I never, I just found a new combo. We just figured out, well, because of whoever wrote that commentary. Was that the Benson comment, or that was Gil's exposition. Okay, well, there's a new commentary we found, boys and sisters, and this is it right here. So we go into Matthew... Which, that's a very interesting one. Let's read the both both together. You are the light of the world. A city sit on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Interesting. It brings up the light again, right? And now, let's go into Psalms 37, 3 through 6. Trust in the Lord and do good, Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will act. He will bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. That's interesting right there, man. I think that just trips me out. When I think about it. I'm underlining it. I mean, I don't know if that's really a combo, but that's what Gil brought up, okay? And Gil had, like, the most to say out of the, many of the commentaries, so I didn't even finish it. Let's see here. Psalms, okay, okay, that was the last of it. The rest is just some sort of 
like Hebrew context. Huh. It's weird that the one weird thing is what Gill's exposition brought up is it says the Targum is reveal thy works to God. And the Syriac and Vulgate Latin versions say reveal thy works to the Lord. Huh. Like, huh, that's weird. We are to reveal our works to God? But, yeah, I don't know, man. That doesn't make any sense. I think, uh, by the way, another thing I think a lot, many people, if you guys have gotten this far, and it sounds ridiculous, if you guys have gotten this far, we also have to keep in mind that our works do not offer us salvation, right? Our works don't offer us salvation. It's like we can't, we can't work for our salvation. But also, what James brings up is he says, faith without works is dead, right? So faith without works is dead, but also we cannot, we cannot earn our salvation through our works. But as we get deeper into the faith, and our faith grows, we are to become like trees, like in the parable of the sower. And as our faith grows, like a grain of mustard seed, and it grows into a tree, we are to, like in Psalms 1, where it says we are to ultimately start bearing fruit. And the thing about fruits is that they bear seeds. And if the parable of the sower is connected to the seeds and bearing fruit, then we are to try and plant seeds. And what is the seed? The seed is the word of God. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, man. There's so many combos. Sorry, everybody. You just saw a big spur of just... <sighs> I don't even know. I wonder what other believers think about this. They probably think it's really weird, but... This is how I do it, okay? I don't know if this is the, the correct way to go about if I'm doing it, but... Oh well, we're trying, right? This is actually what ends up happening, is if I don't get... If I don't... Uh, if I can't find... I, I look up questions and I kind of have harder times finding the things about them. Generally what ends up happening is I have to look into the verses. And we look deeper into the verses, deeper into the verses. We look into that verse and it connects to that one and over there and this one. There's like deeper things. I think if we can end today off with anything, is that there's a strange connection that Gil, Gil's exposition of Proverbs, commentary on Proverbs 16.3, is that there's this strange thing of how Gil brought up the combo of Proverbs 16.3, and then he brought up uh, Psalms 37.5, and then we read Psalms 37.3 through 6, and then that one almost went all the way back into Matthew, right? Matthew 5.14 through 16. So that was a very strange... I've never took those into consideration, and it's weird because we've looked at those verses so many times, and it's weird because I've never thought about that combo right there. That like trifecta combo, and it's very interesting. It's very interesting, actually. Huh. Oh well. Not oh well, but it's a uh, interesting. It's just it's a trip. It's a trip, man. It's a trip. <laughs> oh my goodness, these things are gnarly. These Bible studies are gnarly, dude. I don't know. I, maybe I think they're gnarly. It's just like. Let's see what we draw. Let me, I want to make sure these are really shuffled up, by the way. Right here, right here, right here, right here, right here. Okay. I guess the other one now that we haven't really got deeper into, I did go try and go into it yesterday. It's how small of a seed of faith can we be start planning right now? What are we to draw today? <laughs> I'm so curious. What is it gonna... I always like doing the draw because it kind of just like, just calms the waters a bit, right? It kind of makes me not think so much. Because sometimes I, when I get do these Bible studies, it's like I have so many of these thoughts, just like of these combos, of thinking about this combo over there, or what is this one, you know? And, and sometimes it's just like when I just do these card draws, it's almost like just kind of like gets me into that whole aspect of just like just the fun aspect, right? I think that's the other element of it. 
it, it, it brings this element of just having fun, right? Of just exploring, of searching, right? Searching things out. But also in a way that we can somehow think about some verses, maybe, potentially. Okay, let's see here. Let's see what do we draw today. Can I cut this? Okay, let's put this on our, uh, our Insta. Do 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 Okay, let's see here. Oh my goodness. It's so funny. <laughs> I do these things on my Insta and it's just like people don't realize I just did a gnarly ball all the way at the beginning of it. Okay. Welcome travelers to the car draw of the day. What will it be? Oh, interesting. Oh my goodness. Look at this guy. This guy is gnarly. We got possessed centaur. Look at that dude. I love, dude, the artwork on this one is gnarly, man. He did a great job. Who did this one? Alex Horley. 2002. This was 20 years ago. Possessed Centaur. For some reason, doesn't want to focus anymore, but great artwork. Nicely done. I haven't drawn this card in a long, well, a very, very long time, actually. Ah, that's funny. That is funny. Now, see, it's funny because I, I drew this card, right? Today. Possessed Centaur. <laughs> the artwork on this card is amazing, man. I mean, I, you just heard me, but look at the artwork on that thing. Now people are going to be like, why do, you, why do you have that card in there, right? Well, it's, cause of pro it's because of Psalms 1833. So let's go into Psalms 1833. I've remembered it. I just want to bring it up just so it doesn't seem like... Okay, let's see. Psalms 1833. Okay, let's see here. Is it 1833? Yeah, it is 1833. Yeah, yeah. He made my feet like the feet of a deer. He set me secure on the heights. <laughs> it always just reminds... Every time I see a centaur, it just reminds me of that verse right there. Psalms 1833, he made my feet like a feet of a deer and set me secure on the heights. Okay, number two. Huh. Angel. Angel of jubilation. 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 <gasps> Sarah's Litigary. Let me card I can take out, huh? Sarah's Litigary for... Quarter Paladin. Five. Planes. Six. Hero of Blade Hold. Actually, I might not even do the full card thing. I might just do one card draw for the thing. Seven. Oh, Wake the Reflections. Huh. Wake the Reflections. Last card of the day. Interesting, we got the Pegasus. We got the Boris Vallejo Pegasus card. Boris Vallejo Pegasus. Hmm. Alrighty then. I'm sure you, like, one, two, three, four. Yep, that was it. That was, like, that was the hand for the day. Okay, let's get into riding bikes. <laughs> oh man, these things are gnarly. Nar nar, nar nar, bro. <laughs> these things are gnarly, dude. Oh my goodness. All right, I'm gonna check this cop. I'm getting riding.
Okay, and we're back. We are back. Holy moly, holy Toledo. Okay, let's put some music on. Try and land something. That just feels like it's going all in now. If it works, it's going to work. It's Okay. This thing we kind of set in the middle, I think it is. Oh yeah, we gotta check our PSI. streams off with just doing a stick bee because there were those two believers that got me doing the stick bee so the stick bee no hander that was the weird thing that's what got me into flatland was because of these tricks right here Why can't I get a quad? 
shook so hard. Double fire hydrants and stick uh, tracks the tank stand out here so we'll Double fire agent, track stand, no hander, swivel, stick the ammo stand right there. Break that.
Oh, darn. That's so close. No. That's close, man. Wow. That was a close one. Let's do it. We're starting to get into it. The reason it's just getting that uh, multi fire up is it's kind of hard to get in the, the track stand. Excuse me. I guess the chat is a
Another combo we're working on? Oh yeah, that's the other combo. Let's try this one. Let's try and do that next up one. I was trying that combo yesterday. Hurts my legs for a bit, just squeezing my seat. Funky chicken tail whip. Funky chicken tail whip.
I have not landed anything today. Hmm. That's what we were trying. We were trying to do the, the decade line. really gnarly. Park looks crazy. It looks really slippery.
Do 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 do. I got a sequel break.
It's getting dark early. We haven't even went anything today. We have not landed a single thing today. It is okay. See if you can land a stick, B. <clears throat> hmm, let's see here. Huh, intriguing. Okay, let's see what we can win this. We're trying to get the sticky a bit more down because... Okay, let's see here. Um, which sign should we listen to? Let's listen to this. Slipstream. Should I just try and land a normal one? Let's try and land a turn down one. Come on. You know how I found it? Looking through every one of them? I called one of my pets, uh, one of my hunters up to have it. Yeah. And found it. Oh, okay. Awesome, <clears throat> nice. Okay. Why can't I 
anything, it's okay. Just gotta take it as it comes, right? Try our best. So close. I'm wondering, like, what other trick could I do in that? Bro, I wonder if I could do foot jam. I think I can do combo in here. Uh, let's, let's keep doing the turn down one. Should we find steam on
feeling anything right now. I can't remember anything. I don't like the ones with the sound, the vocals. Do, 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 do. See, what does that look like? Oh, those look pretty cool. Those are fun. Oh! Dude, I forgot I used to do that. I actually found, I forgot I used to do this trick. Oops. There we go. We got a new one. We got a new one. Actually, an old and I'll throw it back. Hey, what, what are those carrots? Mm -hmm. Are those carrots? Yeah. 
I don't think those are good, Dad. Those are really, really old. Don't eat those. Bro, I almost landed that. I looped out. Darn. That was so close. For some reason my finger's been hurting. For some reason it's still swollen. I'm mess it up a little bit right there. Am I okay? Yeah, I'm okay. We are all good. There's like some, oh, I guess my finger's a little bit weird, but it's been like this for a while. For some reason, like, I have this swollen knuckle. This knuckle right here. It's been like this for a while. I just kind of hit it a little bit. It's just weird. I don't know why my knuckle's swollen. I literally almost just landed it. Okay, let's rebait it. Let's try and redo it. This is a throwback trick. I actually have never done this trick in here. So we might do it. I like looped out. Like it's so weird how I just looped out. I don't even know how that happened. Oh, I almost landed. I can't even do it again. All right, 360 tail tap, chainsaw, foot jam, to foot jam, no hander, fakey. I don't know. I did too many gyrators, huh? Let's see if we can do maybe a fakey to. Uh, I guess it will just be a gyrator, huh? Let's go. Okay, I need to lean forward, put my knee on my bar, and then take my hands off. Uh, you know what?
I gotta get that right foot jam or it doesn't work. <laughs> oh no. I can't believe I almost landed. I can't even do it right now. Oh my goodness. Come on, come on, come on. I gotta just commit. I'm like hesitating. We're hesitating. We can't hesitate on this one. We gotta commit. Oh, I don't land the bar snap. Oh, are you kidding me? Like I land the first part now, I can't land the second part. It's okay. That's how it is, huh? Maybe I shouldn't be doing this trick. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like hesitating on the no hander way too much. I gotta like be chill about it. I need to be chill. Let's see, will we get a stick B at least? I think we're moving on. I'm kinda like, it just, it's defeated me. I just almost landed, I can't even do it anymore. Go back to the stick B, turn down stick B. I haven't landed one of these in a while either. Think, what other combos from that one is there? Huh. See what you're doing under. I guess it's under practice. The weekly under practice is commenced. Oof, that was 
close. Oh man. Come on. This one always kind of takes it out of me for some reason. I think it's rock climbing maneuver. Let's just continue trying. When is this trick going to get easy? At least I learned something today. Sweet. At least we landed something. It wasn't the greatest, but it was something, right? At least we landed one. Normally those things take up a, a bit of my uh, bit of my time. Land one. He did a, oh wow, that's really crazy. Interesting, I needed this. Thank you.
Oh, Jesus. Yep. I needed this. I needed some new inspiration. Yes. Wow, he did a lot of Bible art. Dude, that's really cool. Wow. Interesting. Huh. Rick Griffin, huh? Rick Griffin Bible art. Images. Huh. Oh, interesting. Yeah, here's here's another one. Hosanna. Tribute. Huh. Wow. It's always cool, like finding like new Bible artists and stuff. Actually, this guy's from a way back, but it's cool. It's cool seeing somebody like a bit devoted, right? It's inspiring. Maybe there's something to be learned from that, huh? Maybe there is something to be learned. Boop, 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 boop. Wait, did I even do a uh, stream marker? No stream marker, right? Okay. Let's see here.
Wow, that's gnarly. Let's practice some uh, funky chicken tail whips. Funky chicken tail whips. Funky chicken tail. <laughs> you just gotta practice that a lot. Correct. they make it look easy. This is brutal. I need to show them how to do it yet. I'm not comfortable with it. It's like learning how to re relearn how to ride a bike. It's 
so weird. You think that's how to do a funky chicken tail? It's like, there's just so many little things you gotta do. so hard. Maybe this is the reason why there's only one how to, uh, one video of it. Thomas, you're brutal, dude. This one's for Thomas. If you look up Funky Chicken Tail, he's the only one with the clip on it. I know a bunch of people have done it, but in terms of YouTube clips, he's the only one that clip on it. I need to focus on the fucking chicken. Balance it out, almost stall it out, and then throw the whip. landed it. Fudge. Oh my goodness, bro. That was so close. Oh 
Oh my goodness, brothers. Dude, I forgot I got to get in the I was so close to landing it, dude. I can't believe it. Two clips today. Yeah, yeah. That was fun. I don't care if anybody thinks it's cool. Those ones are a little tricky. I'm starting to get a little better at them. It's crazy because I learned all that like in the in the garage, right? Stoked. We're stoked. We got it. Two clips. Mm -hmm. Do 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 do. Wow. See that just man, just landing something like that is just like it's just so rewarding, dude. Yeah. I don't even care if people even think it's cool or not. Those are always a little tricky, man. Those the half bar, the half bar barriers of the cassette, because you have to wait for your crank to get in the right position. Take your hands off. Oh, we're stoked! So stoked, man. I'm happy. I'm happy. Mmm, happy little corgi. And a happy little doggy. Ah, man. Okay, well, I think that might end the stream then, huh? Maybe we'll do like a drawing stream. So if you guys want to see the highlights, we landed two clips. We did a, I think the last, I don't know which one's actually harder. I think those two are actually pretty even, the, under, the Undertaker and then this one. But I don't really know, because I never did the Undertaker into like the Gerator with that, so... This one I've landed before. I This is probably my second one I've ever landed, so. Did that one. It's like a foot jam, foot jam, no hander, fakie, share reader, half bar, 
no-handed generator to half bar land. <laughs> anyway, I guess we'll leave it with a bioverse and then uh, we're gonna go do some stuff. We'll probably, do, I might do a drawing stream tonight, so. I guess we'll just say the steps of man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Psalms 37, 23. I want to trip on, huh? Well, let's continue to try our best, right? Even though it's kind of awkward to do, we'll keep trying. And you guys get to experience the awkwardness. <laughs> These streams are really awkward. <laughs> oh well, we're trying. Okay, I'm trying. We're trying here. Okay, peace out, guys. Very well. <laughs>